bless football, Billy Gill. God bless football, Stu Gatz. Super wild card weekend, huh? It is. It's a big weekend. It is a big weekend. Must win games. That's true. They're all must win games. They are all must win games. Win or go home. Also true. Billy, yesterday we had Adam Schefter on an audio version of God Bless Football. Yes. And he told us, while telling us that Bill Belichick would no longer uh, be the Patriots coach, said the most likely candidate to replace Bill Belichick was Gerard Mayo. Mm-hmm. He is now the Patriots head coach. It's almost like Adam Schefter knows <laughs> things. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah, you think? Yeah. <laughs> I'm bummed about this. It's his job to know things. Bro. Yeah. You're bummed about this. Why? Uh, I'm happy for him, but I'm bummed because I wanted the NFL to step in and say, Patriots, it's time. Josh McDaniels is your head coach, whether you like it or not. <laughs> and I'm not saying this because I think Josh McDaniels deserves another shot somewhere. Right. I'm saying this because I feel like this should be their penance for years of inflicting Josh McDaniels on the rest of the league. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. You send him to Denver, doesn't work out there, has yep. Tebow. Mm -hmm. You can argue for the people that didn't like Tebow. You can argue that Josh McDaniels was Tebow, or Tebow was Josh McDaniels' fault. I because, thought it was great that Belichick said, I hadn't seen this many cameras around this place since we signed Tebow I yesterday. Like that that I was like such that a great too. line by yeah, Belichick. It was a good line. <laughs> it was a great line. So anyways, yeah. he goes out there, he, he fails in Denver, and then he has a cushy landing spot right back in New England just so that he builds up his resume again. Right. Then he heads out to Oakland. Yes. Slash Las Vegas. Uh -huh. Fails Las there. Vegas, right? He didn't coach it's, it. Yeah, he went to Las Vegas. Yeah, Las Vegas. Right. Yep. Uh, didn't work out there. Uh -huh. And you know, you, th this isn't the only guy they've done this Why way. are your legs crossed? Well, because I feel strongly about this, so I'm starting <laughs> to get comfortable. Really? They've done this countless times. They've done this with Bill O'Brien. Yep. Charlie Weiss. Charlie Weiss. Yep. Romeo Cronell. Brian Flores. Yep. Cronell was probably the best of them. I mean. Well, they just have these guys that have been around the Patriots' success, and then they get all of the jobs. And then these organizations believe, oh, my God, the Patriot way. This is going to fix our organization. Right. And it never works. Okay. And all the, and all of the while, Bill Belichick's back there, and he has the Patriots still being the Patriots. And then they fail, and they go right back to New England where they get their old job back, which I don't even understand how you can have so many offensive and defensive coordinators on your team that every time one of them was a head coach loses a job they just go back to their old job sure. and stay on the staff right yeah so and you, then they build up their resume and then they get another opportunity when no one else gets one <laughs> so i feel like the league should be like no all of these guys that you've been sending around the league to ruin teams mm -hmm. you're stuck with them now okay yeah the entire staff the entire staff has to be so, made up of people who left new england to be head coaches and failed elsewhere just to go back to new england and now the patriots have to deal with all of that forever so forever you, forever not i was first it was like three, forever four years. that forever. seems harsh no forever it seems this harsh. is their staff right. for the it, the rest of time how about for as long as belichick was the head coach maybe oh, like okay, 20 years fine. yeah that forever seems like that's fine okay that's fine so you want Josh McDaniels as, as, you know, head coach. You want Charlie Weiss, offensive coordinator. Romeo Cornell, D coordinator. You don't want these things as some sort of thing that will help the Patriots. It's a form of punishment. Correct. I for ruining okay. the league for years. And for getting off, if we're going to be honest with you, for getting off on Deflategate and for getting off on Spygate. Because okay. they just a little... And for having Tom Brady. This is right. all they had. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And right. for getting lucky on Brady. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I like it. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen. I know. Gerard I know. Mayo happens. This a, well, I mean, I, I'm happy for him. Are you? I am, but, I, really? but I'm but i happy for him, but sad for me that the other scenario didn't work out. Not that I don't, I don't think, and I'm not a great NFL historian, right? So I'd have to look, but I don't think a commissioner has ever um, forced a coach on a team for 24 years out of spite. But I'd have to look it up. <laughs> you have to look it up. I'd have to look it up to be okay. certain. Yeah. Uh, why are you happy for him? Just, you know, we got a job. Yeah, I got a job. Right. It's been with Belichick for a long time. Yeah. Bob Kraft clearly knew when I got rid of Belichick, this guy was going to replace Bill Belichick. Yeah. There's a piece of bacon flying out of I my mouth. I wasn't going to say it. I was it's watching and it was struggling. It's a little afternoon to be eating yeah. bacon, uh, but it keeps flying out of my mouth. Yeah, I was struggling there. I was I watching to see what was going to go on. <laughs> you fought through it, though. I don't know why you mentioned it. You didn't have to. I wasn't going to. Well, I, I thought it was, it was obvious to the audience that a piece of bacon just flew out of my mouth. Yeah. I love bacon. Do you? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, Dolphins, here we are. Uh, the game is Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, Dolphins take on the Chiefs. You love your Dolphins. You're wearing your hat today. Negative 30. I love a Saturday night game. That's fantastic. I do too. Yep. I love a Saturday night game, especially when it's a team that I want to watch. So I don't have to 
you know, build up to it on Sunday and the weekend. Sunday night's the worst, if I'm going to be honest Agreed. with you. Agreed. I yeah. love Chris Sims. I love Mike Golick. They both do Sunday night football in different, you know, locations. But I hate waiting around for Sunday night football when it's your team. The Same. The worst. The worst. And then when they lose, like last week, the Dolphins did. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like why I stayed up till midnight just to be upset. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way on Saturday, and then I have you know Sunday right. to recover. Win or lose, I have yes. Sunday to recover. To recover, yes. yes. Uh, what? Where's your confidence level right now? With uh, low, is it low. really? Yeah, it's low. You know, it's, people are talking about the weather. Negative fifteen come kickoff. It's like Tariq Hill never played in cold weather. He played in Kansas City. I mean, yeah, but you know, <laughs> it's just it. it's been it's been a lot of I know been a lot of the same with the Dolphins, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the TV side here, we have uh, Chris Long, who's going to join us. He was great. We had Chris Long on uh, right when the news broke that Pete Carroll, who won a Super Bowl, two national championships, uh, that he was fired. So we get his instant reaction to that. And we're going to have Chris Sims on this episode uh, as well. Are you going to ask Sims the question? Which question? The Trevor Lawrence question. Oh, I'll ask him. What do I care? Yeah. <laughs> he's going to get mad at you. Yeah, I mean, he's going to find a reason to get mad at me anyway, if we're going to be completely honest. If it's not that, it'll be something else? It'll be something else. That's just how we, uh, you know, it's how we roll. All right. Let's go with the chiller of the two Chris's first. Okay. You know, Sims is a bit hyper. He gets angry. He gets emotional. Yeah. He gets mad at you. Chris Long, very chill. Chill guy, yeah. All right. Let's go to Chris Long. This is definitely one of those things where if uh, the Bills lose, it's going to be one thing. <laughs> so I was pretty, I was like, yep, definitely going to be on the show now. <laughs> Why, you want to make fun of us? <laughs> no, not at all. I just was like, I was prepared. If you guys won that game, I was going to get a bunch of shit. I texted <laughs> uh, Dan after the game, my uh, tattoo that I had picked out, you know, many moons ago before I realized it probably wasn't going to happen. Right. Uh, and I was like, doesn't look like I'm going to have to get this, but we'll see. <laughs> what was the tattoo? <laughs> like, it's like a muscular dolphin with human arms, obviously. Uh, right. And he's flexing and he's got Dan Marino's number, but I was just going to replace that. It's like <laughs> some dude from the 90s probably got a tramp stamp, too. He's got uh, Look how proud Chris Long is of himself for this. <laughs> it's great. I'm so glad to be out of that. I was like, because when I said it, I was like, man, it's not going to happen. And then. And then, you know, there's moments in the season where there's like a, a month long and you're scoring 40 points a game. I'm like, I know what I think, but am I going to get a tattoo? <laughs> what What was the bet? Like, when does it end? I think it just should just go his whole career as a dolphin. Honestly, like I'm willing to extend that. No, but Billy's asking what the actual bet was. Like, where, so, did, where did the no, bet so come the, from? The bet was, it was like from two years ago. Um, I was on the Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was on the show and I had gotten into some sh because I was not talking highly of the quarterback and and I said, listen, if he wins a Super Bowl with the Dolphins as the quarterback, I will get a tattoo, uh, a tattoo, a and, tattoo. A, yes, that was the line I used at Augusta. I was at Augusta at the time, right? <laughs> so yeah, I got the picture and it, you know, but uh, hopefully we'll see. Uh, <laughs> glad to be on, man. Either way. Uh we appreciate uh, we appreciate you coming on. I guess we've already started here, so <laughs> yeah. No, it's like it, it's been a while, so I'm glad to uh, yeah. What, what we can get a roll and start whenever you want. Uh, yeah, we just start, man. Like I, I think we probably will use that uh, <laughs> the tattoo. Of That's the, cool, bro. Shot. I mean, I love having a having a a bet hanging over my head. You know, so it's all good. Yep. Uh, are you still enjoying the media game, my friend? By the way, before I get to that, I'm sorry. I apologize because I read that you have welcomed your your third child recently uh, yeah. into the world, and it was a girl, correct? Yep. I am. I uh, get to do the girl dad thing, wear the t-shirts. I'm not sure what else it entails yet, but um, yeah, I, she's uh, June is almost six months. She'll be six months here soon, and uh, yeah, three is there is no advice that I could give to anybody else on three. It's just you, you just figure it out. Uh, how yeah. happy was your wife? Because you have two boys and like, I mean, you know, like how many long boys can you, <laughs> can well, you honestly, have one time? I, I think I, I was feeling for my, for my mom because, you know, she had three boys and she loves that. Like her license plate growing up was three boys zoo. Right. And then she changed it to four boys zoo when my first son came along and then it was five. And then, you know, you're like, damn, one of the girls coming. And then Kyle, my brother, the perfect guy to have a daughter first, because he needed to calm down. 
right. you know, be a little yes. less aggressive. Right. In fact, like the anecdote is the first time he found out I was a girl, he's like, I'm having a girl. I was like, this is the best news ever. Right. And he's like, what the f do you mean? <laughs> I was like, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, you know, like having girls now in our family, they're actually starting to outnumber the boys a little bit in this generation. It's awesome. Uh, my wife and I, we just wanted a healthy kid, you know, like when you take time off, like when you, you when you're in that kid, kid washing machine, it's easy to keep going. Sure. You know, the hard thing is when you take some years off and all of a sudden you realize like, damn, we got to hurry up if we want to have a third. And like my oldest is seven and, and my youngest is four and I'm 38 years old. I know it's different now people having kids into their 40s and 50s but we were like we'd like to be done here soon so we just wanted a healthy kid and um a girl great you know um it's been it's been awesome uh, are you still enjoying the media game my friend yeah I, I, I in the beginning i was because you're so motivated to build something and so motivated to succeed and take all this energy that you had in your career and then pour it into something else like i'm driven by trying to build something and succeed like i don't like the attention that's been the the tightrope that you walk is like, sure. if you say interesting things, you're going to get attention. If you say things that are bold and if you're authentic, you're going to get attention and people are going to quote you. And that was the thing for a while that while I was like hell bent on build, building the thing, I also found myself a little bit uncomfortable with, you know, appearing to, to try to get attention, which you're, you're not doing, but you know how this thing goes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there were there was a while there where I got pretty worn down and didn't like it so much. Um, I'm kind of coming out of that because I think and I'm sure Dan and anybody in you, Stu, Stu got, it's like same thing. But you have a vision of how you want your life to go in this stage or in this chapter. Um, and then you have to fail at at it, so to speak. You have to, like, bite off more than you can chew. You have to say, hey, I don't like the way this is going. And then you can if you have any control over your life, you can kind of kind of retreat a little bit. And that's what I've done is like, I think there's been three stages, the excitement. I don't know anything stage where you're just like, I'm going to take over the world. And then there's a second stage where you're like, <laughs> damn, this space is crowded. I don't like the attention. Uh, nothing's working relative to my expectations because your expectations get higher. And then the third stage for me now is like, it. I just want to I, I want to build a life that I'm going to enjoy. I, the reason I got in this thing is I like talking to people. I like, you know, seeing you on Zoom. I like being able to to crunch football all day long. Like, that's fun for me. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it, like, I'm not going to stress myself out and chase success. Like, that's where I am now is like, just have fun. Enjoy the football. Talk to your friends. Do things you love to do. Right. Like, even with guest booking for a while, you were like, oh, I got to get the best guest or got to get the big name and it doesn't always pay off. And sometimes you come out of those interviews and you're like, what the fuck was that? I, I love talking to my friends and people that I click with. So that's the stage I'm in now and just trying to take things as they come. Uh, I'm happy to hear that. But Chris, you should always be doing it your way. I mean, right. you made a ton of money playing in the NFL. Uh, you have a great life. And so this should just be fun to you. You should just find the funnest parts of that's whatever what the hell this thing is that we that's all That's what do. I'm trying to do, yeah. man. You know, and inevitably there's going to be days where it's not fun because you got to talk about certain topics or you have opinions that other people don't like. And I, I said this on my pod recently. And part of this is not having this attitude as a content creator, but consumers of content now, I feel like we argue about football the way we argue about politics. We argue about sports the way we argue about politics. And and I'm a sucker for conflict. Like, so if people invite me into conflict, I'm going to take it. Right. Um, but I don't want to seek it out. And I don't want to do my job in that frame of mind, like where everything's winning an argument. And I've just tried to turn over a new leaf where in 2024, some guy wants to argue with me about a player online. Like, if you're not cordial, I'm not going to talk to you. Right. You know, and I, I, I don't need to. Now I'm going to fall short of that, but I just want to have fun to your to your point and have fun conversation. I think in general, everybody's got to chill the fuck out a little bit. Like, <laughs> w when did we get to this point where sports were like life and death? And if you have a different opinion than somebody on a quarterback, or Justin Fields or Tua or, uh, you know, an offense or a defense like we are killing each other out here. Right. You know, like you don't even need Russia and China don't need to divide us on politics. They could just they could just divide us on the NFL and we'd be weaker. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, so it's like uh, I, I I don't want to be a, p- a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution there, and I want to have fun and interact with people. Uh, I see Billy and Mikey laughing over there. Well, <laughs> Billy, no, what's going I, on? I, I think I think that you just figured out the next evolution, which is a sports show yeah. called Life or Death, and that's kind of like the that's the extremes. <laughs> like you live or you die, based yes. on this take, and then you rotate in and out guest co-hosts because they got death. They got died. Some of them are yeah. gonna that guy, die. That guy got died. died. What are you gonna do? So you guys has a perfect game for that show. It's called Shot for Your Life. Yeah, oh, yeah, shot. <laughs> shot for yeah. your life. Uh, let's play it real quick with Chris Long. A shot for your life. A three pointer for your life. Okay. Uh, Larry Bird or JJ Reddick? Who are you taking? I'm taking JJ Reddick. Oh, dead. What? Yeah, you're, you're dead, now, Chris. You, you're wow. not off of life or death. Yeah. Sorry, man. You died. I, I think if Larry, I think I, I don't think Larry. Here's why. I don't think Larry Bird gives a about me right you know he he might but jj reddick you're does? scared of yeah, JJ, JJ, reddick? jj cares about me although he hasn't called me lately or had me on his show ever since oh wait three okay so up. you have a relationship with jj is what you're saying yes yeah, <laughs> so basically like i'm gonna be like hey jj man like you know you don't want to see me die you know that sort of thing um larry bird's amazing are people yeah. arguing about larry bird no in the year of our lord 2024? Uh, no, I mean, listen, you're the first person I've asked that question to who chose JJ Reddick. Just, just so it's we're just clear. a personal. It's, it's. I know the guy, and I don't feel right. like Larry's going to be extremely empathetic to my plight. Okay, well, but you know, Larry, Larry, Larry he the, can't. You know, Larry wants <laughs> yeah. to hit the shot, though, Chris. Larry wants to hit the shot. Sure, you know, like either one, I feel pretty good. I thought you were going to give me like, you know, somebody who's like 30 percent or 20 percent from three. <laughs> That, that, I can whoever. give you someone who's not your friend if you'd like to do it. Yeah, that yeah give me that somebody one. who's not do my friend. One. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Larry Bird. Hmm, who should I go with here? Larry Bird. Are you friends with Steph Curry? No, but I'm taking Steph Curry. Mm. You're going to die, man. Well, Larry the- Bird or Michael Jordan? Are you friends with Jordan? No, I'm taking Larry Bird. Okay, good. <laughs> there you go. The problem, yeah. <laughs> Chris, is everyone else who's played this game is like Bob Ryan or like that type of person no, who the right. answer is always going to be Larry Bird. Yes. <laughs> well, if you have Bob Ryan play, yeah, or or uh, the other gal from the gal from Boston who's on uh, every every uh, she was on like all the sports reporters and stuff, Jackie McMullen, like yeah. those people are going to pick Larry yeah. Bird. <laughs> What a great poll right there by you, Jackie yeah. McMullen, yeah. Dan Shaughnessy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up watching sports reporters and shit, so. You know what happens if they don't pick Larry Bird? They die. Well, yeah. they, you happens. die. You they die. die. <laughs> you die. <laughs> Literally, Bird. someone in Boston will kill you. <laughs> yeah, which, which, which sounds about right. I mean, and those people don't love me there anyway, so. You want a Super Bowl there, Chris? Yeah, but I don't kiss their ass. Right. You know, like, I think there's certain... I don't think all Pats fans are like this, but I think there's a sense when, number one, I was just a role player there. So, you know, they feel like they lured that over your head. Like, like, I don't know that. And then number two, when you leave in free agency, you know, and you, you, you decide to leave and then you go to a team that beats you in the Super Bowl. And I haven't like unnecessarily gloated about that because again, you know, it's a team game and I just got lucky, but I do think that that kind of, for the few that actually think about me on a regular basis up in Boston, I think that factors in. And then the fact that I have the audacity to talk on the team as a national media member, which I'm not, I don't know what the membership is to be a national media member. I I don't know if I've jumped through those hoops, but I talk about every, every team. So you know how it is when you talk about somebody's team, they act like that's the only team you're talking about. And for Boston people, I think sometimes they're like, what the does this guy know? He's only here a year. I know what I see on tape and uh, I don't, pretend to know more even though you were only there for a year you kind of i guess got a behind the scenes view of the patriot way and all that stuff are you surprised to kind of see how this is seemingly ending with belichick and the patriots where it's almost like it looks like both sides are ready to move on and it's almost like he he seems like he's just hanging on and trying to find a spot to pass shula which seems crazy at the time where he was at the top of you know the football world and he was a genius and he was clearly the best ever. I think it just goes to show you that like football's really hard. You know, like when I'm watching that last game in the snow and he's getting beat by Robert Sala, who is find me a person in America who says Sala is a better coach. Um, you know, I know that the jets probably had arguably the better team on the field that day, but watching him go out that way. And it was surreal for me watching the last 18 seconds of that game. You feel like you're watching history. I mean, you are watching history. I'm watching him stare out onto the field 
and then I'm watching him, you know, uh, walk down into that tunnel, you know, and, and, and once he walks in that door, you're like, I'm probably never going to see Bill again in this outfit. Um, pretty Crazy. surreal. And, and Bears, who's his right hand guy is like looking out the door after he walks in and then he shuts the door and it's kind of like watching history. It's like watching some world leader walk away from the podium for the last time. Only his term was like decades. And, um, I, I, I love the guy. Uh, I have a lot of respect for the guy. Um, I think he's a great coach. I, I think he can still coach, but he needs a fresh start. And I, I also think he's the type of guy that I think he's the type of guy that, that doesn't want to stop. There's nothing that he'd be coming home to, you know, like I know he has a life, he has a family and probably some interests, but you can't build little model ships or go on tours of the Navy <laughs> campus or, you know, like, whatever else, hang out with his dog that, that can't fill his time. And I don't think he has something that he can, can replace the football itch with, but for these coaches, um, especially when you've crossed that threshold and you're not like retiring by 60, you know, Bill's 70 years old, where's he going? What's he right. going to do? I think he's passed up that chapter in his life where he's like, I'm going to retire and relax. Um, I do think he can still coach. I worry about the buying the groceries and 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 chefing up the meal. Just be like, the coach. Yeah. Just be the coach. You know, right. and and I I think I think that's going to be restrictive in some places if he wants to do the same thing. I don't I don't know that every place is going to look at that and say. I, I think the minority of places would take that chance. You wouldn't know, Billy. I don't think he has think, a choice. No, I know, but well, you think he'll be if, fine? Kind of like let me just focus on this and get the record. I think it's I think it's you'd have to get inside his head and understand the motivation. If it truly is the record. And I think he tied the record for the most losses uh, at the end of that, that, that game Sunday um, regular season losses. But like, if the record's important to him, he's going to go coach somewhere where he respects the GM, you know, not every place has like a Mickey Loomis where there's like organizational structure for a long time. And obviously the results have been mixed and, you know, bringing Derek Carr in wasn't the best move in retrospect, but I think Mickey's done a great job. You think about like a team like the Saints. Um, I don't think anybody's talking about Bill going down there, and nor am I implying that. But maybe if there's a GM that commands his respect on some level, um, I don't know if it's like, hey, you know, there's a situation like Atlanta where it's like, what does McKay do? Right. You know, is he's not the GM, but Fontenot's not even at the at the Fontenot or however you say his name. He's not even at the the press conference with Blank and McKay yesterday. So it might be a situation like that where there's like a hybrid and he's like, okay, I can live with this. This is a guy that hired Tony Dungy. He's, he was in Tampa for a long time. They've, this is a class organization. I think it's, it's about Bill respects who he respects. And if he respects those people, he'll work with them. Um, but it's also about his motivations. Some of these jobs, like big jobs might, they might come open Philadelphia, yeah. uh, maybe yeah. even Dallas. If Mike McCarthy yeah. loses, Jerry Jones says it's a game to game thing right now. Uh, so I would kind of wait uh, if I'm Bill Belichick. Where could you see Belichick going? Take it job by job. Like ideally, in my mind, you can't go defense again in L.A. I know I know that, you know, people have floated his name there. Harbaugh would be a great pick for the Chargers. Uh, ben Johnson would be a great pick for the Chargers. Um, I do think with Bill, like history factors in. So if like the Giants job opened up, I think the Giants, I mean, with his with his respect and reverence for that that franchise, like you could see something like that. Um, I, I mentioned Atlanta because I think if you look at Blank's coaching higher record, like he has leaned a little bit defense. I know he had Petrino for a year and um, that flamed out because he left for um, uh, Louisville. Or it was Arkansas. Right. He left for Arkansas before the Arkansas. road rash thing. Um, but, you know, like, if you go, I don't think Tennessee necessarily. I think for him, it's got to be quality of life, respect for the organization. Um, Atlanta comes to mind. The other openings, obviously, at this point are the Raiders. And if I'm the Raiders, I don't think that job should be open. I'm an Antonio Pierce fan. I think, like, Mark Davis, for as much as he wants to be popular, what's the most unpopular thing he could do is pull a Bisaccia 2.0 only with a team that played even better and had a bigger turnaround. I don't think if I'm the Raiders that I look at Bill over Antonio, you know, right. because each job, it, it, it demands a different timeline. It demands a different culture infusion. It demands a different, like, what are you after? 
for instance, with Harbaugh, I think he's great with a young quarterback. So, like, don't send him somewhere where you got to retread. Right. Or the quarterback's already there. Like, I think Jim would be best suited going somewhere where you can work with a young guy. So I think, you know, it's a little bit of what are these teams looking for and what is the coach best suited to do? Well, Sims, what the f*** is going on? What? You mean in the NFL? The coaches? Yeah, just in general. Legends? What the hell I mean, is happening? Yeah. Right? It's crazy. <laughs> really, like in 24-hour span, Pete Carroll, Nick Saban, and Bill Belichick, right? It's just like, it's insane. It really <laughs> is. I did not see the Nick Saban thing coming. I did not see the Pete Carroll thing coming. I knew the Belichick thing was coming. That, that was like as obvious as can be. It's really about where is he going to go now that this has happened, right? And it's official, right? So that that's going to be the big thing. My, you know, Atlanta, watch out for that. People I know in the business, whatever, Atlanta is certainly on the radar for Bill Belichick. And as I said with Florio on PFT today, and he kind of saw this coming. I'll give Florio credit last week. I think Dallas is a real possibility for Bill Belichick as well if Mike McCarthy ends up losing this weekend to the Green Bay Packers in the wild card round. Well, it's worth some of these coaches waiting around to see what happens, right? Like if you're Jim Harbaugh, if you're Bill Belichick, you can you could afford to wait just a minute to see if maybe Buffalo comes open, maybe Dallas comes open, right? Well, right. I mean, I don't expect Buffalo to come open, but Dallas certainly sounds like, I mean, first off, I think that was a low blow and a horrible thing for Jerry Jones to say about his head coach who had just gone 12 and, in, 12 and 5 for the third season in a row. And now they're going into the, the march of the playoffs and you kind of cut out his authority, but the, we'll see week by week how it goes if he can keep his job. Oh, great. That, that, sure, that surely gives him confidence and makes all the guys in the locker room you know, realize, oh, wait, the general might you know, be fired here in a few days? Oh, wow. That, that, to me, was a horrible Horrible comment by Jerry Jones. Like, really, really, uh, like, not, doesn't make sense. But to your point, yeah. You know, you know, like you said, Dallas might come open. Andy Reid, could he retire when exactly. this is over? Yeah. Somebody, you know, so, so, yeah, there's no rush for some of these uh, big-time coaching candidates to, to make a decision. Uh, Billy, Mikey, how do you feel about this, okay? Sark to Alabama. Golick mentioned that to us, okay? Chris Sims to Texas, huh? What do you think? <laughs> 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 no nonsense, <laughs> high-powered <laughs> offense. I like it. Give him Man. reason to hate you again. <laughs> right? Yes. I mean, it, it, would all, it would all work, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, that's not happening. First off, I have no interest in ever really being a college football coach or associated with college football in any shape, way, or form, right? That's just not me. I'm a little too real. I got too many bad words that come out of my mouth. This, the first time Jimmy Johnny's parents call about him not playing enough, I'm going to be like, hey, f*** you. Get the out of here you don't know what you're talking oh. about and that's not going to be good for recruiting so yeah i'm not made for college football <laughs> yeah you're made for backyard football no he's made for backyard football on thanksgiving that's it i'm I mean. made for the nfl i'm made for the nfl it's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's huh? put up or shut up that's what i am i mean well, if i, I mean, was gonna dive into the business i'd definitely be going to the nfl you were with the patriots go replace belichick i mean <laughs> yeah mm. right right yeah <laughs> Quality control uh, to TV to head coach of the Patriots. Uh, Sims, we have a, a Saturday. Big, <laughs> <laughs> we have a big weekend of games coming up. Super wild card weekend. I love it. Uh, the game you're most excited about. The game that that Chris Sims can't wait to watch. Gosh, uh, mm, there, there's a. I, I think the the Rams Lions Sunday night football game is the one I'm most excited. Right? Uh, you know, just the Stafford Goff situation. Uh, the Lions, it's their first home playoff game in, you know, 30 years. And then here it comes the guy who saved their organization for 10 years straight and made them a playoff contender some of those years just because of how great he was. They have a true loving of the guy. I, I think that that's interesting to me, let alone, you know, the Lions played last week. I was not a proponent of that. You guys know that. I think I said that on the show. There was nothing to gain. Now Sam Laporta's hurt, probably not going to be 100%. Teams banged up. Rams rested everybody, going to be ready to go, right? Uh, you know, nothing to lose. Nobody expected them to be here anyways. That hot running game they got, I I'm excited for that one, I think, the most. Uh, does Pittsburgh have a shot in Buffalo? Yes, yes, but it, it hurts without you know, T.J. Watt. Uh, you know, they they want to make the game ugly, ball control, 
keep it a one-score game? Can our defense get a strip sack fumble or special teams block a punt and we can kind of win the game that way, right? Uh, so that's what they want to do. I just don't think that's going to be – I don't think they're good enough to pull that off this year. I don't. I, I think, one, the Bills' defense – the Bills have been pie and playoff football for the last six weeks. They're going to be ready to go. Bills' defense is really damn good, right? I know Steelers' offense has improved, definitely, uh, but I just don't see them being able to consistently move the ball well enough. Now, you know, and then in Buffalo, not that their schematics are going to be an issue – for, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're not incredibly talented on the defensive side of the ball. And Josh Allen, as you saw, is a freak of nature last week. I mean, again, 426 yards of total offense by one guy. He's just still got to limit, you know, those two or three bad plays are just really bad. And that's got to stop. But, yeah, I like the Bills at home. 27-13 is the score I pick, guys. Wow, nice. Giving us a score, Sims. I like it. Uh, the Browns and the uh, the Browns and the Texans. Chris, you were the first one. When you said to me that C.J. Stroud, you said it on this show, was the best rookie quarterback you would see. Just his vision, his patience. He feels the rush. He steps up in the pocket. He does everything well. And with him, they are a great team. Not a good team. They're a great team. They lost him for a few weeks, and they had a couple of losses when he was out. But uh, I love C.J. Stratt, and it was the first time I said to myself, wow, I got to go watch this guy. I have to see him if Chris thinks that highly of him. But they're taking on this Browns team, this lovable Browns team suddenly with Joe Flacco at quarterback, and I'm not certain what to do with this game because I can see either team uh, winning it and moving on. As aggressive as Cleveland plays on the defensive side of the ball, do I think C.J. Stroud can make a big play or two to Nico Collins down the field? Yeah, those chances are increased with how Cleveland plays football. But, man, I just would be shocked if the Browns don't win this football game. I really would be. I don't see a whole lot of avenues in which the Houston Texans can win this one. I think it's a tough matchup for them. You know, even last week, C.J. Stroud doing what he did. They played a game watching that game on film where – they're worried about their offensive line. I don't know if they can protect well enough to make things happen. You know, last week you saw they ran the ball at, not, you know, a bunch of attempts, yes. but not for many yards mm -hmm. because they're worried about their offensive line and their pass protection. They were worried about the Colts D line who can get after the quarterback. And they called a lot of three step drops. They called a lot of tight ends staying in block, two tight ends staying in block. That's not going to fly against this group. It's not. I mean, these are the craziest bunch of fuckers I've seen on defense in a while. Like you've heard me say, it's 2015 Broncos. It's that type of crew here. And I look at Cleveland, and I think they're one of the few teams in all of football that can beat the Ravens. Hey, they're the only team in football that beat the Ravens and the 49ers. That's kind Crazy. of impressive, yes. right? Yeah. And that's because of this defense. The only thing I worry about, and you've heard me say this a million times, Kevin Stefanski, arguably coach of the year, Love the X's and O's. Love how he leads his team. Love the Jim Schwartz hire. Don't like how he manages the game. I think he's one of the worst game managers in football. I do. Mm. Right? And that's what I worry about. You've heard me say it. They go for it on fourth down too much. They go for it in general too much. They're a little too aggressive with Flacco. That scares me. Flacco went off against this defense the first time around. They understood the D'Amico Ryan's defense and rules. I like the Texans in this one. I don't think it'll be as big of a blowout as, as it was the first time around. Chris, the Jaguars. I mean, the are Browns. Did I say yeah, I like the yeah, Browns? I was going to correct you. Yes. Excuse you like the Texans. No, you like the Browns. Yes. yes. Right. Like the the first time around, the game was 36 right. to 7 halfway right. through the fourth quarter. Bunch of crazy I think it's on that defense. Kind of shake yes. Out. Right. 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 Yeah, I'm even more confused defense, now. Sims. Who do you like? <laughs> he likes the Browns. I, crazy on defense. I've been telling you the Browns the whole time. The Browns the whole time. I misspoke with one word. Okay. Billy's going to chop that up in a way that you're not going to be happy about. <laughs> Chris, the Jaguars are currently sitting at 17. Not currently. They're going to stay at 17. Uh, if they get creative and they move up, should we start looking at Trevor Lawrence's replacement in Jacksonville? <laughs> what, 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 like, what, what the, like, what the f are you talking about? Get him off the show, guys. Get him off. See ya. You talk. I don't talk stupid. Okay, so I, you gotta re 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 ask that question. I I don't understand the language. No, I'm, I'm totally fine with how he asked the question because of the reaction. I mean, <laughs> yes, the response was just as good. Let as the me question. see. We got one of the best young quarterbacks in football who's got a rocket laser arm and has led us out of the doldrums of being Jacksonville, and. 
he brought us to the playoffs last year and we couldn't protect him or run the ball this year and he still almost brought us to the playoffs <laughs> but let's can replace him like what let let's like come on who's that come on what yeah. was that what, uh, you you can tell me miguel cabrera's uh all pro in baseball next thing right now i mean what are you doing get out of here <laughs> thank you billy for asking that he's kicking you out of the show. he's kicking you off the show <laughs> let's get to packers cowboys <laughs> i'm dying Let's he's get just the deflecting. He's deflecting because he doesn't want to talk <laughs> about Tua and the Dolphins. So he's no, like, we'll get to it at the end here. Okay. We'll get to All it right. at the end. But Packers, Cowboys, second <laughs> half of the season. Holy <laughs> Chris, Jordan Love has been good. He's been the best quarterback in the NFL, and I can't believe the Packers. I've been waiting for a quarterback my entire life. The Packers now have three decades worth of great quarterback play. It, it, uh, it is incredible, right? It's, it's incredible. Yeah, it's driving me crazy. I, I see. I, I can see the Packers winning this game. I can. Am yeah, I crazy? Yeah. No, I don't think you're crazy. I think okay. they match up really well with the Cowboys. I took the Cowboys to win, but like you know, this game and the Lions Rams game are the two games where if you ask me, a, an upset can happen this weekend. That those yeah. would be the two, right? Mm -hmm. right? And I don't think a lot of people even look at the Lions Rams as an upset. I think a lot of people look at that as pretty evenly matched football game. But this is the one I think that could surprise people a little bit, right? The Cowboys last I saw favored by seven and a half. I, I you know, I the Cowboys are better, but as we always talk about, it's a matchup league. Just because you're better in totality doesn't mean you match up well with this team, you know, this week. Dallas, we always talk about, right? Hey, their pass rush is awesome. They don't stop the run that well. Aaron Jones and the Green Bay Packers, they can run the ball. It's three weeks in a row of over 100 yards rushing. Green Bay can protect the passer. Their O-line is very good. They got receivers that can get open against man-to-man, -man, especially if Christian Watson's back this week. Mm -hmm. And they're aggressive and push the ball down the field. Also, LaFleur knows Dan Quinn a little bit. He's been on the staff with him. You know, he plays a, pit, a defense in Chicago that's very similar to the style in which the Dallas Cowboys play. So I think they'll be ready for that. Joe Barry, the defensive coordinator, he's been around West Coast offenses his whole life. Mike McCarthy, West Coast offense. So, you know, there are some things here. Now, the biggest worry I have is the Packers defense versus the Cowboys offense. The Cowboys, Prescott on fire, CeeDee Lamb on fire, right? Green Bay's defense inconsistent. Not so great in the back end always. They can get after the quarterback a little bit. I think this will be a lot of fun this game, a lot of scoring. But I think I'm, I'm going to take the Cowboys in a close one while also mentioning that, yeah, this is upset alert too because I do think the Packers, hey, they're like like the Rams. Nobody expected them to be here. Correct. They're going to be feeling free. Hey, let's take a chance. Let's be aggressive, right? And I think knowing that they're the lesser team here, that they'll have to do that once or twice in this game. Uh, I think they will make it very interesting. If their season ends this weekend, it's a successful weekend. If Dallas's ends this weekend, it's a terrible season. And so exactly the, I, right. I love teams when they have nothing to lose. I, I, I right. agree with you on that. Uh, yeah. Final two games, we'll get you out of here. Eagles, Bucks. Uh, I love the Baker Mayfield story. Eagles are reeling one and five their last six games. Uh, I don't know what the f to do with this game, Chris. I, I don't really know what to do either, right? I went to a base thing of, um, you know, Eagles when. It's it's five out of six, like you said. Mm -hmm. Could easily be six out of six. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and it's like it's hard to find silver linings, right? It's like whoa, 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 whoa! Like the Cardinals whooped out of you. Like whoa, 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 whoa! The Giants like dominated you, you know. But on the other side, it's like the Bucks lose to every team in football except the Carolina Panthers last week with the way they played. <laughs> Right, and exactly then the week right. before that, to yeah. lay an egg against the Saints and be dominated by them, that, that bothers me. It does. I kind of went with the base level of the Eagles are more talented. They still have championship merit and grit there. I, I'm going to take them in a close football game. I think this is a game you're going to see Jalen Hurts run the ball more, right? There's a very few things I can look at with Philadelphia and go, ooh, they can do this and fix it, or ooh, they can do that and fix it. They don't play great pass defense in Tampa, the receiver's health for Philadelphia will be something I'm looking at, but I would think they break out a little more Jalen Hurts run game to use that to their advantage in this one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take the, the, the Eagles 27 to 20 in this Stugats.
All right, let's get to Billy's game here Saturday night on Peacock. Uh, Dolphins and Chiefs. Great move by Peacock putting that game there uh, because there's a lot of interest in this game. Uh, Dolphins and Chiefs. Chris, this is all I can say. I know it's going to be cold. I know the Dolphins have not been good against playoff teams, but I do know this. They can run the ball, and they can stop the run. Those things I know, and those things travel, okay? Right, right. Keep running the ball. Again, last week I'd go, they don't run the ball enough. Right. They let they let they let teams off the hook too easily. Teams, there's too many plays where I go. This is too deep. They're totally playing for the this pass. The safeties are 25 yards deep, and they still try to throw the ball. And I just want to go. Hey, well, that's why you just went three and out there, and now Buffalo's got the ball back again. Right? It just their two drives last week when they scored touchdowns. What did they do? They ran the ball. Right? They have a pronounced thing that I see that I I have never seen it so apparent in my life where if it's too deep, they can't throw the ball, right? But they can run it. Yes. If it's one deep, they can't run the ball, but they can really throw it. They need to package almost a whole game like that. They yes. really do. Shifts, motion, set, hut, dummy, snap count, right? Oh, I saw the move. It's too deep. We're going to run the ball. Oh, they're coming down to play single safety to stop the run. Oh, now I got Tyreek or Waddle outside in a matchup that I like. Okay, they need to make it as simple as that. I like the Chiefs in the game, right? But I don't sit here and just go, oh, yeah, this is warm and cozy. I'm going to put $1,000 on the Chiefs, right? I think that the base level, the weather, the the grittiness, the playoff cha- you know, championship grit the Chiefs have, the injuries on on the Dolphins. That's they, the biggest they all, thing. Yeah. They all point towards Chiefs, right? You mm-hmm. know, Tua in the cold weather and the wind – to his arm is below average for an NFL starter below but to begin with. Now you have to do that, right? So those things scare me. But I will say this. This is a Chiefs offense that is not good. Will they embrace running the ball and being ugly? I don't know if they will. And like you guys know, it's one reverse to Tyreek and, oh, no, it's a screen to Tyreek. And, oh, no, the Dolphins are up 14 nothing or 14-3. to Like, all right, that might be too much for the Chiefs offense to overcome. Yeah, that right. that's where this is not the old Chiefs team where if they slip up a little bit, they're in trouble. Um, I like the Chiefs, like I said, but a close one. I do. I'm, I picked them to win twenty four to twenty. All right, Billy, you have a shot. You think you have a shot, Billy? I mean, it's. Cr- I mean, I I have no idea what to expect from this game. Like the Dolphins, even if you love them, you can't have a ton of confidence, right? And it seems like you're saying it could come down to one or two big plays and just eliminating stupid mistakes that have happened the past couple of weeks for the Dolphins. I, I, I think so. I think yes. it's almost both sides. You can almost say the same thing, yeah. right? Kansas City, I mean, who does more dumb stuff than them too? Dropping balls, lateral and shit. Can't line up on side. Mahomes throws some dumb interceptions. They try a stupid trick play that doesn't work. I mean, they're the league leaders in dumb shit. Nobody well, it, comes at Chiefs. Well, that is such a great Josh one. Allen is pretty dumb sometimes. Well, yeah, I yeah, maybe as a single play. Like you're right. Yeah. I mean, Josh Allen, it, you know, he played at an MVP level and was probably the best player in football when he was at his best. It's just like we kind of said earlier, when he was at his worst, it was like, what? You yeah. threw that in the end zone? Yeah. Like you just threw it to the middle of the end zone? Just like I hope that Gabe Davis is there? Yeah, there's some things there to your point, 100%. But the Chiefs as a team do this stuff, and that's what's scary. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, it, it's a tough game to gauge, certainly. And, you know, I just worry about the Dolphins and any ugly, gritty, tough, physical football game. And mm-hmm. that's what the Chiefs did the first time around, the Ravens, the Bills both time, the Eagles. And the, the Dolphins have a thing of, like, if Tyreek doesn't go off, they can't really win the game. If you keep Tyreek in the 60 to 85 range, the other team wins. And that's what we've seen from the other good defenses and the teams that have beat you. So can they show another avenue to make that not true? And that's where I get into the run game again and all that stuff, and we'll see where it goes. But I do think it'll be fun to watch, uh, and, and it'll be a, an exciting close football game. I'm worried with the weather. While we're saying both teams need to avoid the dumb, we're going to get so much dumb. We're going to get well, so yeah, much the dumb weather, with that weather. The weather, see, that's it's another reason where I just can't pick the Dolphins. And and I and I, I hope they prove me wrong, but, you know, Kansas City is not going to be – they're going to be like, well, we live here. And I've seen yeah. Mahomes play in the blizz- in a blizzard twice, and both times I had to go like this. I had to be like, whoa, is he really throwing the ball that good and throwing that hard of a spiral <laughs> and is spinning like that fast? 
Like, I think I've told you that before. First time I ever saw him in person, it was a blizzard playoff game, Andrew Lux blast playoff game. I was like, let me go down and watch Mahomes throw in this wind right now. And I went down and I was like, I literally wiped my eyes. I was like, is that an optical illusion? Am I seeing this right? And so he will not be affected by the elements there. And I worry about that with your quarterback and, and your team, Billy. But the neutralizer is Kadarius Tony can't catch a ball in a dome. So we'll, well exactly. see what happens when there's <laughs> bad weather. Hashtag Chiefs do dumb <laughs> Like we talked yeah. about. Yes, exactly. Lead the right. league and dumb. I love it. Right. I'm glad right. you guys got over Billy's Trevor Lawrence question. You mended fences. You came back together at the end. It makes, <laughs> makes me feel good. Okay. Uh... <laughs>It is time for this week's edition of Stu You Gots, presented by DraftKings Fantasy Sports. Check out what DraftKings has to offer this season with code LAF because life's more fun when you're in on the action. DraftKings, the crowd is yours. Playoff time, the second season is here. Super wild card weekend, four and three last week, 71 65 and one for the regular season. Do it in the playoffs. I'm going to try. Mm. <laughs> what do you mean, me? Just. All right. Taking it in. Here we go. Super wild card weekend. I've never done this while sitting next to Billy Gill. Feels weird. Sorry. It's all right. I'll leave if you want. No. Yeah. I. You know what? I would appreciate if you, you know, tell me whether or not you agree with my picks as I do them, okay? Okay. Sure. All right. The Texans are taking on the Cleveland Browns. Joe Flacco, CJ Stroud. The game is in Houston. I am taking the Texans here. I know a lot of people think the Browns are going to win this game. I like the Texans. I like them at home. The Browns defense not nearly as good on the road as they are at home. So I am going to take the Texans here as badly as I want to see Joe Flacco go to Baltimore and play Lamar Jackson. Not going to happen. Mm. I am taking the Texans here plus two and a half. They win the game outright. Buy it up to three, which is a waste of money since I just told you the Texans are going to win the game outright. Yeah. But the Texans win the game at home over the Browns by four. Yep. What? I like the Browns. You do? Yeah, next game. <laughs> let's go. Uh, let's go to Kansas City. The Chiefs are taking on the Dolphins Saturday night. It's a big one, Billy. Mm -hmm. They're all big. It's playoff time. Dolphins plus four and a half on the road. Take it on the Chiefs. Listen, I know about the weather. I know the Dolphins against playoff teams this year. I get it. You know what? I don't care. The Dolphins, they're going to cover the four and a half. In fact, Wow. The Dolphins are going to win the game outright. The Dolphins beat the Chiefs in Kansas City. Andy Reid retires. The Dolphins win by seven points on the road. The Bills at home taking on Mike Tomlin and the Steelers. I cannot believe Mason Rudolph is a playoff quarterback. He is, though. Buy it down to nine and a half. I think Buffalo wins. They win easy, and they cover the spread. The Bills by 17 points over the Steelers. Packers plus seven and a half at Dallas. I want you to buy it up to eight, even though I think Green Bay is going to win the game outright. How about that? I have the Packers getting knocked out in the first round. Mike McCarthy gets fired right after the game. Oh, oh, oh. you don't agree? You have the Packers getting knocked out in the first round and Mike McCarthy. I have fired? Dallas getting knocked out in the first round and Mike McCarthy getting fired right after the game. There you go. Thank you, Billy. Gotcha. Thought I said that the first time. I didn't. Yeah. Fuentes says I didn't. Uh, Packers win the game outright. Packers by four points on the road over the Cowboys. Big game. They're all big. Matthew Stafford going back to Detroit. Rams plus three at the Lions. Buy it up to three and a half. The Rams are going to win the game. The Rams beat the Lions. Matthew Stafford finally wins his first playoff game in Detroit. The Rams win the game by six points on the road. Finally. Eagles, minus three at the Buccaneers. Buy it down to two and a half. I'll tell you why in a second. I know Jalen Hurts is a bit off. Steeler, uh, the Eagles, one and five, excuse me, in the last six games. But the Bucs, Baker Mayfield's had a great season. He's banged up, hobbling around. I'm going to take the Eagles here, Billy. Mm. They went to the Super Bowl a year ago. I still believe in Philadelphia, and I think they lost on purpose last week to play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They wanted the Bucs. They got the Bucs. The Bucs stops here. The Eagles, they win the game. They could have had the two seed. You're right. They cover the spread. We digress. The Eagles by seven points. Those are the picks, everyone. Good luck.